tell us about this year's Detroit Black Film Festival. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, we're super excited. Detroit Black Film Festival plus Taste of Black Spirits. It's a uh, dual event happens September 25th through the 29th. We have four screening locations. Um, we are uh, kicking it off with um, short films and feature films and documentaries, everything across the board. It's going to be a really, really great time. Yeah, yeah. So the cocktail end of this is new, <laughs> Lazar. <laughs> Why do I suspect this was your idea? <laughs> well, we, we've introduced the event in 2021 called Taste of Black Spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been traveling, taking that event across the United States. And last year we decided to, why not blend both of our events together, right? Why not add the cocktail concierge to the cinema and culture? So we blended it last year and it worked to perfection. We were able to combine our audiences and give them both an experience that neither one had experienced or would not have experienced if it was not going on at the same time. Yeah. So it worked very well, and we decided to do it for now on, actually. So it'll be a part. Taste of Black Spirits and Detroit Black Film Fest will happen at the same time within each other uh, for now on. But let's go back to the, to the beginning and talk about how much this festival has grown. It has become much more than, uh, than it started out as. Isn't that right? That's correct. It's interesting because when we first started track Detroit Black Film Festival, it started during the pandemic. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I remember and that. So uh, absolutely. And so it's it so our first year, it, it wasn't what we expected, but it actually turned out to be really great because we were able to gain an international audience from around the world um, because it was virtual. Uh, we had all of our films that were screening online and the the connection that we had uh, doing the Zoom calls and being able to connect artists with the audience uh, virtually uh, worked out, you know, really, really great. And then once we were uh, back in full effect uh, per in, in person, it just made it that much more exciting because mm -hmm. people got to be in the same place in the same space as the filmmakers, people that had made connections during the pandemic were able to come to Detroit and meet each other uh, personally and experience their films um, uh, in person as well. So it, it it's grown uh, in, in a sense that our audience uh, has grown. And even with the number of films, we have 57 films from around the world this mm -hmm. year that mm -hmm. we are featuring. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about the films and how you choose them. Uh, you, you usually have uh, quite a bit from Detroit and you you are great at featuring Detroiters, but, but as you point out, the films come from all over the world uh, as well. Uh, let's, let's walk through the, the process of, of how you figure out what's in the festival and then tell us what we should be excited about this year. Well, it's it comes from the diaspora so we have films that come from uh all around the world and the criteria we start with the jury and they have uh 10 different um categories that they rate the films in and some of them are really technical like uh production quality uh you know sound all those things but honestly the biggest i think criteria is just overall uh entertainment quality entertainment you know do we think our audience are going to enjoy uh, this particular film mm -hmm. and so it it narrows down to that um and we get hundreds of films um we deliberate and then our final lineup is what people come out to experience um and we have several screening locations uh the michigan state university detroit center the marlene bowl ymca theater that's downtown and the car center performance studio uh, as well the car center usually has uh, the documentary films we have a number of films that we're calling our racial and social justice uh, series. So uh, for those who like social impact films, we have that um, at the YMCA. Most of them are our feature films and those are um, like kind of our urban films, our dramas, but we do have you know, some romantic comedy in there um, as well. And so there's something for just everyone to enjoy. So Lazar, tell me about the spirits and uh... 
what people will be able to experience uh, with that part. So, so this year, this year, um, so last year we introduced Rod Isley. So he'll be back with us this year. Um, we are also doing a grand tasting mm. of Beyonce's Sir Davis mm. uh, whiskey. Uh, we're doing a, a, a I want to say a private um, sam grand sampling in the Cage Jewels Lounge. So we created some lounges for brands and products to um, for folks to participate in the lounges. But also we have three days of education. So we bring in uh, uh, spirit buyers from Meyer. We bring in folks who have uh, offered capital distributors uh, like MH MHW and so forth. And we also have Derek Whitehead, who is a financial guru who can come in, who comes in and talks about how to structure your, your, your business, how to use your money wisely, which is very important for all of us, right? <laughs> um, but it's going to be a great time. And then the the, the sampling itself, you're able to sample over 150 African-American-owned spirit brands, beer, wines, and beverages. When I say beverages, because we also have non-alcoholic uh, items and beverages, and we also are presenting some of our Detroit products like Nikki's Ginger Tea, um, our guy, uh, Black Eden from out of uh, Idlewild and several other brands. So it's going to be a great time. It's going to be full of education, entertainment, and elevation is what I like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've been doing this for five years. Uh, I wonder if y'all can reflect some on, on uh, the effect that you feel like this festival is having on Detroiters, on film, on black film, and and the uh, the support for it. Uh, it. It seems like there's a lot of momentum that's just been built up while y'all have been doing this. There, yeah, there's been a lot of momentum that is built, built up within the last five years, uh, especially in the Detroit um, community. I, I don't... I know that our community, like the the independent film community, like kind of knows this, but I don't know if the broader community knows how much content is really being made here. Um, I, I could say that there's at least three to four um, feature film productions that are happening in uh, Detroit, in the Metro Detroit area on a consistent basis. And uh, some of those films are in our uh, festival as well. Um, so this is a, a great time. Um, to see the film. Some of them are on streaming, streaming platforms already, but this is a time for you to connect directly with the producers, directors, the actors that are in these films. And the the momentum is just going to increase and get um, even stronger, I mm -hmm. think. And festivals like this gives artists a platform for the community to really experience what's happening in the Detroit um, independent film community and the independent community um, across the board. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Lazar. Right. And I think it gives us it gives us a um, as as filmmakers and as independent filmmakers who are working in the market, gives an opportunity to hear to hear their voices, right? To tell these stories that we may not hear on uh, um, a, a large or a huge uh, festival or streaming channel. But we we've seen some short films. I'm talking about some amazing short films since day one. Our very first year, I think we only had very very few films, but 90% of those films. So the first year of Detroit Black Film Fest was difficult to choose because it was so many. It was so many great films that were that were submitted that we end up awarding probably 60% of the films that we chose because they were all great films. Uh, and the stories and the stories range from um narrative to short documentaries to uh it was a film called uh about our hair right about the black hair it was a great film about that so the things that we are able to uh folks were able to reach and the things we're able to achieve with what we do because we're very intentional about what it is we do we're very intentional about delivering the message and the power of our mm -hmm. voices and the power of what we are able to do as black people yeah. And I think this is one of those platforms that really gives us, us as Black people, an opportunity to really raise awareness about our experiences. And what's really great is that you are going to see some new faces, um, up and coming uh, actors uh, that you, you may not have known before. 
And you're also going to see some very seasoned actors and uh, that have, you know, household name recognition like uh, Lynn Whitfield and Malik Yoba and Anjanu Ellis. And um, so it's going to be a, uh, an, a, an array of what folks are going to experience. Yeah. yeah, and we definitely got our Detroit filmmakers in there, right? We definitely got those in there. Got some great films happening, and those those films will play at the Marlene Bow Theater. Uh, some great actors, some great films, and we support. We've always supported our hometown filmmakers. Like we we try to give them as much of a stage uh, presence as possible because we have a lot of visitors, and we want them to really shine. Uh, and that and that we kind of like set the presentation up for them to really shine. Who are making a name in their own right. And people can find out more about the film festival at uh, Film Freeway, Detroit Film Festival, um, Detroit Black Film Festival. All right. Thank you. Watch One Detroit, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.